Hi, how are you doing? I get this question quite often, and the question that I get is, what is the name of the father and the son, respectively? And many people have been asking me about it, and so I just wanted to take this time to really address it in person, and as well as give you my answer to why I use the name Yahuwah for our father and Yahusha for the son. Now my intent with this video is just to explain why I use the names Yahuwah and Yahusha for the father and the son respectively. I know there are many ways and versions and pronunciations out there. This video is in no means to offend anyone or cause any division, but rather just to give some edification and just to explain why I myself use those names. I can only be accountable for myself and I can only explain why I use the names that I use. I've explained it in previous videos back towards the winter earlier this year but I thought it would only be fair for the rest of you if I explained it in person and so that's exactly what we're gonna do today now we can all agree that the original scriptures were in fact written in Hebrew so the Bible that you see today what's commonly known as the Bible and the KJV and all the other versions to go with it we can all agree that the ancient scriptures were in fact written in Hebrew well if we can all agree on that with both the Old and the New Testament then we know for a fact that if it was written in Hebrew then the names of our father the names of the son and and the name of the disciples and the name of the prophets they all have Hebrew names if scripture was in fact written in Hebrew and if you've seen some of my other previous videos then you know that what you see today in scripture the words Lord and God well those words were substitutes because what originally happened is that the translators back then and the Masoretes what they did is that they took out the name of our father and the name of our son and the name of the prophets and they replaced it with English translations and told you that this was okay to use when in fact this is not and so hopefully you understand that a little bit better we'll go over that more because the name of our father has been taken out of scripture close to 7,000 times so wherever you see the word Lord it should say the name of our father which is right here in the paleo Hebrew and we're going to be talking more about that as well so we know that all of the prophets and the disciples they all had Hebrew names as well as our father and our Mashiach but what you also probably did not know is that they all had the name Yah or Yahu in their names all of the prophets that you see in scripture in fact had the name of our father in their names so now the question we're going to be tackling today is well what is the Hebrew name of our father and the pronunciation of our father now I've also made out some note cards here that can help us out because this is the actual translation of the name of our father when you look at the modern right here and we know that Hebrew is read from right to left so this is how the name of our father is written in the modern Hebrew or commonly the Hebrew that you see today now if you look at the Paleo Hebrew this is the name of our father that's written in the Paleo Hebrew and this comes before the modern Hebrew now they're pronounced the exact same way but this is how you would write it in the Paleo Hebrew and we're going to be going over this more in each pronunciation later on and when you look at the ancient Hebrew which comes before the modern and the Paleo Hebrew this is actually what you get here and as you can see in each of the examples you get exactly four characters and we're going to be talking about each of these four characters and how to pronounce the name of our father now hopefully you can see this card okay but the reason I'm holding this one up is because this is what's commonly known as the tetragrammaton or what's commonly known as YHWH and like I said again Hebrew goes from right to left as you can see like that so as like I said it goes the YHWH or the YHWH in the modern Hebrew or the yod he vav he and we're going to be talking more about that in the proper pronunciation as you can see right here in the Paleo Hebrew, which comes before the modern, you see once again the Tetragrammaton or the YHWH. Again, it's read from right to left. So the YHWH is commonly known to many, which is the Tetragrammaton, the Yod He Vav He. And we're going to, like I said, we'll be talking more about that. But hopefully, this just gives you a better idea because the Tetragrammaton is the name of our father.
Now you see the tetragrammaton that's written in ancient carvings and ancient scrolls. You even see it written in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And you see the name of our father that's been written thousands and thousands of years ago that even predates and precedes the Masoretic period. So the tetragrammaton has been written and used by the ancient biblical Israelites. And that's the name that they called upon for thousands and thousands of years. And in a second to come, I'm going to link all the examples and resources that you actually see the name of our father written in the places that you see the name of our father written, which is commonly known as the Tetragrammaton. And as I said earlier, we know that the Tetragrammaton predates and precedes well over the Masoretic period. So we know that the name YHWH or the Tetragrammaton has been written for thousands and thousands of years. So no, it is not made up. And yes, there is actual archaeological evidence to support this name. So now that we know that this is in fact the name of our father, the question becomes how do we properly pronounce this? Because I know it's taught in Judaism that it's pronounced yod He vav He. But what is the effective pronunciation of the name of our father and how can we properly pronounce this? Now, if you look at Strong's Concordance, H3068, you actually see the name of our father. However, you see it's pronounced differently, but we're trying to get a better understanding of what it's really pronounced and if there's a bigger agenda because they don't want you to know the name of your creator. And so now we're going to go over each pronunciation of each letter effectively to see what we get and to see how we come up with the name Yahuwah. Now, as you can see with my handy dandy note cards here, we're actually going to be going over the different pronunciations of the Tetragrammaton, which we just went over, which is this example right here. So we're starting out with this first letter and we'll go on to the other ones because remember, it's right to left. So this letter right here is Yod, as you can see, and it's pronounced with the Y sound or it's pronounced like a Y. Now, as you can also see right here, what I've done is that I've added the number 10 right here and I've circled it. And the reason that I've done this is because this is the 10th letter that's found in the Hebrew alphabet. And it is commonly known as the Yod, so it makes the Y sound. It's pronounced just like the letter Y. Now, the second letter is this one right here that's found in the modern Hebrew. It's the He, and it's the fifth letter that's found in the Hebrew alphabet. Now, when you look at this, it's actually pronounced like the Ah or Ha. And so we have the Yod and the He, which makes Ya when you put it together. And you actually see that in Tehalim or Psalms chapter 68, verses 4. But this is actually the second letter, and it's also the fourth one, too. So we know that they make the exact same sound, and it makes that that ah sound, it's pronounced like ah.
Now, trust me, it'll make way more sense when we put all of this together and when we finally put all the letters together, but this is the third letter in the name of our father. Now, it's commonly known as Vav, and it's the sixth letter that's found in the Hebrew alphabet or the Aleph Bet that's commonly known. Now, there's a lot of talk when it comes to how to pronounce this letter. Now, some pronounce it as a W, and some pronounce it as a V, and some pronounce it as a U or U. Now, I'm going to tell you why I pronounce it as a U sound or the U sound. There is a reason for this, because when you look at the letter W specifically in the English language, the letter W is the only letter in the entire English alphabet that has more than one syllable. All the other letters has one syllable, but the letter W has three syllables. And when you pronounce out the letter W, you get double U. I've also written it down here on our handy dandy note cards. As you can see, the letter W right here, it pronounced and makes the double U sound. So when you pronounce it out even more, it makes two double U's. And that's where the letter W comes from because there was no such letter as W 2000 years ago, let alone during the time of Hebrew. And there was certainly no letter J, not even 400 years ago, let alone 2000 years ago. So in conclusion, the letters W and the letters V, they actually come from U and they make the U sound in ancient languages. You can also find this out in ancient etymology too when it comes to the etymology of the Roman language and the Hebrew languages. Both of those languages do not contain the letter W. In fact, the letter W is only a few hundred years old. And like I said, it makes the OO sound. It makes the U sound. And I'll be sure to show you the actual etymology resources too in just a second. So we know for a fact that this letter right here is actually oo and it's pronounced like the oo it makes the oo sound as in double u so it makes the oo sound right here and then of course we have fourth and final the letter is the hey once again which is pronounced ah because we also saw this in the second letter too so of course they're going to have the exact same pronunciation so when you're ready to put it all together this is what you actually get in the modern you get the y the a h the the oo sound and the ah, and when you put it together, you get yahoo or yahua when you put it together. Now, this is what you get when you look at the Paleo Hebrew, which of course precedes the modern, but it's the same pronunciation. It's the same yod he u he, and this is exactly what you get. And when you put it together, because remember, Hebrew goes from right to left. You once again get the pronunciation Yahua once again, and it's the same thing too when you look at the ancient Hebrew too, the Yod He U He. This is just how it's written in the ancient, but when you put it together, you get Yahua or Yahua. And so this is the final product of what you get. As you can see here, this is the Paleo Hebrew of our father, this is the ancient, and this is the modern, and you get Yahua once again. Now, another witness that we have to the name of our father and another way that we can figure out his name is actually Judah. And Judah in Hebrew means Yahuda because it actually contains the name of our father. Now, if you look at Strong's H3063, you'll actually find the name Yahuda written. Now, I put M right here for the modern Hebrew, and it goes right to left once again. And this is how it would be written in the Paleo Hebrew. This is how you get Yahuda. Now, you see something different. You see the D here, the D sound, because this letter right here makes the Dalit, is the Dalit, and it makes the D sound. And this is how it looks in the Paleo Hebrew. It makes the D, the D. D sound. Well, what happens when you take off the D from Yahuda, which commonly is known as Judah in the English today? What happens when you take off this letter right here and this letter right here, the D or the Dalit? What do you get? 
because when you look at the name Yahuda and when you look at the Dalit more closely, what you start to see is that the letter D in Hebrew actually means door. And the reason that's so important is because Yahuda is the door to our father Yahuwah and it's the doorway to finding the name of our father Yahuwah. Because when you take away the Dalit and when you take away the letter D in the Hebrew, so we no longer see it right here, when you take it away, you're left with Yahuwah once again, which is the name of our father. And that's the way we're able to find it. And the M right here represents the modern and the P represents the paleo. But hopefully that makes more sense of how we get to Yahuwah. And pictographically speaking, if you look at the name of our father, you start to see that each specific letter has a meaning of its own too. So the Yod means hand, the Ah right here, or the He means behold, and then the Vav or the U, it actually means nail. And then once again, we have the Ah right here, or the He, which means behold. So when you put it together, you get hand, behold, nail, behold. So you get, when you put it together, the name of our father, Yahuwah, pictographically speaking, it actually actually means behold a hand, behold a nail. Now we're going to be going over the name of our Mashiach and why I use the name Yahusha. Now, like I said, I'm only held accountable for what I use and what I say, and I'm going to be talking and explaining more about the name Yahusha in detail. Now, as you can see, this is actually how you write his name in the Hebrew. This is the modern, this is the paleo, and this is the ancient right here. And as you can see, the name of our Mashiach actually has five characters in it and five Hebrew letters. And we're going to be going over each one in just a second to come. Now, this is very, very, very important indeed. And hopefully you're heeding this because John Yahukanan chapter 5 verses 43, our Mashiach tells us that he comes in the name of his father. And we know Jesus cannot be the name of our Mashiach because there was no letter J 400 years ago. And I've done plenty of videos on this. If you look at the 1611 King James Version, you will not find the letter J in that version whatsoever. And we know that our Mashiach comes in the name of our Father. Now this right here on top is the name of our Father. You see the yod He and the u He right here. And then this is the name of our Mashiach that's right here written below. But when you look closer and when you take a closer look, you start to see that they have some similarities in their names. And the similarity that you actually see is that they contain the Yahoo in both of their names, as we spoke and mentioned earlier, that all of the prophets had Yah or Yahu in their name, as well as Psalms or Tahalim, chapter 68, verses 4, that says we are to sing praises to his name, Yah, Yahu, or Yahua. Because when you look at it now like this, you see the Yod He U, which makes the Yahu sound, and then the Ah for Yahua, which is the name of our Father. And then we you look at the name of our Mashiach, you see the Yahoo written once again. And you see right here that the name of our Mashiach, it has the name of our father in it. So we see that the name of our father and the name of our Mashiach, they actually share the same name right here. And then right here, that additional letters for our Mashiach is the Sh and the A, ah, which we're going to go over in just a second. Now, I should also add and mention that the name of our father, Yahuwah, that all of these letters that you see right here, they're all vowels, and this is the name of our father without the vowel points. The reason that the vowel points were added to the Hebrew language is so that they can confuse the language and so that they can try to rid the name of our father from ever being, but now the truth is finally being restored. 
And so now we're going to talk more about the name of our Mashiach, Yahusha, and why I arrive at Yahusha. Now you can find more about this in Strong's H3091. Now, of course, the pronunciation that they're going to give you is Yahoshua, but we're going to find a little bit more clarity on that right now because we see these five characters and five letters in the name of our Mashiach. We see the Yod, He, and the U, which is where you get Yahu which is where you get Y-A-H-U, and then you have these two letters right here, the Shin and the Ayin, because the Shin is the 21st letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and then the Ayin, which is right here, is the 16th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and that's where you find the name Yahusha. Now the shin in the Hebrew, which is what you find right here, it's pronounced like sh or sh, and the ayin is actually silent in the Hebrew, but it makes the uh sound, which is right there. So when you put it all together, you get yahusha or yahusha when you put it all together. And I know I've gone over this in many other of my videos, but we see Yahusha once again. So we see the name of our father right here, Yahu or Y-A-H-U, and then we see the Sha right there. Now the Sha root is very important because the Sha root means salvation. And when you actually look at the meaning of the name of our Mashiach, it means that Yahuwah is salvation. And as witnesses to the name Yahusha, we even see the Sha'ru that's written in the name Isaiah in the Hebrew because from Strong's H3470, we actually see his name written out as Yashayahu, which also means Yahuwah is salvation. But even in Isaiah's name in the ancient Hebrew, you see once again the Sha'ru, his name has the Sha'ru, which denotes and means salvation. And another witness, we also see it too written in the name Husha or Hosea. Now H1954 or Strong's Dictionary, they pronounce it Hosea. But when you actually look at this, you see that it's pronounced Husha because right here you have the H or A-H, Ausha or Husha when you actually put it together. And when you actually look at this closely, all it's missing is the Yod because if you put the Yod right here, that's where you get the name of our Mashiach, Yahusha. Now what you also find is that the name of our Mashiach, Yahusha, in the Hebrew is actually found over 200 times in the Tanakh, or commonly known as the original Old Testament. Now Joshua also shares his name too, because yes, Joshua and the Mashiach in the Hebrew, they have the exact same name, so it makes absolutely no sense that they have two different names in English when they have the same name in the Hebrew. Now you'll also see the name Yahushua too, and I would just like to clarify this too, because this name is actually found twice in the Tanakh in Dabarim or Deuteronomy chapter 3 verses 21, as well as in Judges chapter 2 verses 7, but there's a big difference between the two of them. Now the reason I use Yahusha as opposed to Yahushua is because like I said, you find the name Yahusha 216 times in the actual Tanakh. But when you look at the Shua root, it actually means to cry out from Strong's H7769. It means to cry out, not save. So when you put Yahu there or when you have Yahushua, it means Yahua cries out, but it does not mean Yahua saves. The other reason, too, is because Shua, you can actually find the root Shua in the name Yeshua, which is what's commonly known and used by most Jewish people and many others. But when you actually look at this in the language and the etymology of this word, because the Shua part comes from post-Babylonian captivity, and it actually means may his name be blotted out, which is why I do not use Shua. And so when you look at the name of our Mashiach, once again, this is exactly what you get. You get Yahusha, which you can see right here, and it's written in the modern and the paleo and the ancient, again, the five different characters that's written, and they all make the exact same sounds, Yahusha, and when you put it together, it's Yahusha. So those are some of the reasons why I use the names that I use, Yahuwah and Yahusha respectively. I know there are many versions out there. I know there are many variations. And I also know that Sapan Yahu, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 8 through 9, says that our Father will restore unto us a pure language. And of course, we're all looking for truth. But hopefully this made a little bit more sense. Hopefully you were able to follow along. And hopefully this was edifying in some way, shape, or form, because that's what it's about. It's about edifying one another and remaining humble and just helping one another because we're all really looking for truth because remember this the truth will make us free 
And just like the name of our Mashiach says, we know that Yahuwah is salvation and we know that Yahuwah and Yahuwah alone is salvation. Hopefully this video has been helpful unto you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'll be sure to leave my email in the description box below at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com. Again, that's just two sevens, not three. I'll also be sure to leave some helpful links and resources and tools in the description box as well that can help you out more on this so you can see a more visual too. But like I said, hopefully this has been helpful unto you. This is Truth Unveiled here saying peace, love, and as always, shalom.